table for this unnamed MMO that you and I are building. Well, actually, we're designing it. We're leaving the programmers up to actually implementing it. And uh, so let me uh, bring on the guys here on uh, Google Hangout. Hello, everybody. How are you today? Hi there. Hi. Hi. Good. Hey. OK, so looks like um, we've got a pretty good show today. And uh, we're simulcast on uh, YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch and you actually want to watch in full 1080p, you can do so on YouTube, on my YouTube channel. It is live right now. So, okay. Um, so, our subject today is the inventory system. We're designing it. We're leaving oh, the I'm hearing myself. What's going on here? And uh, so, where is that coming from? Me, uh, Holy cow. On the guys here. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is bad. Okay, am I hearing that from the from the Hangout? Okay. No clue. So, Probably not. Like, Check if you uh, have YouTube open. Got, uh, I do have YouTube open. Today. I have all and, of these uh, streams open. Oh my goodness. On, uh, YouTube and Twitch at the same time. Not good. For monitors, it's complicated. Yeah, yeah. I'm like having. Um, difficulties here you know what oh yeah see here it was I was sitting on my YouTube channel uh, in a browser and it just started playing whenever the show started <laughs> well that is the price for new technology okay so uh, it's um, um, quite complex anyway let's continue on so we are talking inventory systems today and uh, uh, so, what we uh, l let's first talk about what kind of systems uh, you've seen before that have worked well. Any of you? Well, there's the basic one, like you open up and you have a limited amount of space that you can upgrade by <laughs> one of the in-game jobs, like tailoring. Mm -hmm. And so, like... Uh, Okay, so so you can get more space, are you saying? Is that yep. what you're talking about? Most of the time it is somewhat time consuming to get to the decent place. Well, let me uh, let me start at even a, a lower level here. Um, <clears throat> there's a couple of inventory types I've seen. There's like uh, a backpack where you just toss stuff in and it just goes anywhere. And then there is... Um, there is uh, slot-based inventory, and uh, that's where you know you've got um, you've got so many slots, and I think that's what you're talking about, Inc. About uh, how uh, you would upgrade to say get more slots. And um, is there any other kind of inventory systems? Are those the only two? Where's or the weight system? Yeah, the weight uh, with the over encumbrance. Uh, Okay, but 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 system in there. but okay, wait or not, if you have two items, do they just get tossed into a bag, or do they get tossed into a grid, or do they? Before we even talk about weight, let's talk about the display of the items. Last game I played, it was just bag without any slots, just just no open, open space, and it was basically weight system only. Mm hmm. Actually, one of the better ones that I've seen was if you go back to like the Final Fantasy IV days, uh, just having your list, and when you go into the menu, you get your you know the lines of what it what's in your bag, and uh, you get presets of customization on how to order it. So like it, the battle use items will be moved to the top on one, or so on and so forth, and then you and, and go down and, and actually an, customize it. Is that in a grid system? Yes, in a list. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Yeah, you could either work with a list system or with a grid system. And with the grid system, uh, it, it usually clogs up your view quite easily. Um, yeah. mm -hmm. When mm -hmm. you have a list system, it's for quite easily to, to uh, subdivide all the items into groups. For example, like ore types, you can have all the ores belong to a certain group. You can have all the weapons belong to a certain group. You uh, All the building materials to another group. Uh, for, therefore, you can just 
simply collapse the tree and have a have an easy filtering system of what you want to what you want to look at. And if you do it database style, you can also just add search queries while you're looking for your inventory. Therefore, mm -hmm. you can carry theoretically an unlimited amount of items. It's just yeah. limited by the weight, by the which weight, of yeah. course increases uh, as you progress during the game. Mm -hmm. What uh, yeah. what what game uses a system like this so that we can have an example to look at? Mm -hmm. Eve, Eve, for example, yeah. Except they don't do it in weight; they do it in volume. Right, right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That's and a. There's actually that's... multiple views in in Eve yeah. for that. Um, more, more. It's actually a lot like Windows, like Windows Explorer. Pretty much. Yeah. What's that? <laughs> so. Huh, and it, and it gives the user uh, kind of like a personal touch on how you want to uh, look at your stuff because uh, I have friends, personal friends, uh, when I'm at their home trying to do even their settings, then I can just not find anything because they have complete <laughs> set of settings. Um, and vice versa, exactly the same. But they come to my place and go like, how the hell do you find anything like this? I say, well, it's what I got used to. But it does give the player flexibility. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's that's really interesting. Uh, I hadn't I hadn't actually you know I I've played Eve of course, but I didn't even think about that being an inventory system. So, okay, so and that that would I would say would probably fit a it's grid based as well. Whether it's just how you display the grid. Um, um, yeah, as I did it in Eve, you just uh, click a button and it and it switches from from list to, to grid. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just thinking about uh, how I've uh, even on like Windows Explorer, um, you know how you can do just icons, or you can do just the text, or you can do small icon and text, um, or you can do like when it goes into picture mode, you know you got a big picture of each thing. Yep. So, and even uh, you could you could go even a step further by uh, if you hit space like on a Macintosh, it, it zooms in on a certain detail level uh, where you can have a look a closer look at the item if you want to. Mm -hmm. I mean that's that's a further step, but you can go as far as you want. Of course, with those kind of systems, when you just have a standard grid system in the simplified games, that would be a lot more difficult. Where you actually have to click the item and drop it somewhere else before you can do anything with it. If you can just move around it with your mouse or hover over it or use your cursor to do so, then it gives you a, a vaster uh, amount of options that you can do with the stuff in your inventory. And I think also that the choice of the actual inventory type would largely depend on uh, what the main kind of stuff is that we're going to be carrying around in the game. Mm -hmm. What? Uh, so <clears throat> the, the game so far is shaping up to be like a medieval fantasy. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, style or feel to it, and um, uh, in Eve, it's a space game. It's futuristic. It's tech. Um, do you feel that having a, a system like Eve uses would break the the immersion of uh, a medieval fantasy game? Will Will it fit? Like, yes, I think it would break it. Yeah, it makes no sense if. Uh... This medieval game type, I think. I wouldn't be having any problems because you have a physical bag and it has a volume inside it. Well, <laughs> I, I, I think the an inventory system of what's on your person is that that basic setup would work well, but for overall inventory, I think that would be problematic because you don't have a computer that's like sitting there telling you, oh, you have X amount of this at this guild house, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. if it's like, just no, it look on your person, yeah. I don't think you should be able to do citywide either. I, I think it, you, you have inventory storage spaces, kind of like with Diablo 3, you have the chest, but even then in Diablo 3, you could still, couldn't you check out the inventory in the chest? In that, or did you have to go to it? I forget. You had to go to it. You had yeah. to go to yeah. it. I mean, something like that for this sort of genre makes sense because it's yeah. not just you know what's convenient to the players. It's you know, you 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 have a, a a bank vault. You have stuff in it. Well, you might forget what you have in that bank vault. You know, 
you have to go to it to actually see what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's it, that's I, been that's the way it was in Ultima Online, and uh, I, I do remember sometimes I'd find a box somewhere that was hidden, and I'd be like, "Oh shit, that's where I hid that," <laughs> you know, <laughs> um, and and you have to be physically right there at the item's location in order to even know about it. Um, in Eve's system, you can look up anything anywhere. Yeah. And uh, you, you may be able to, you know, you do, you're able to cons to sort into, uh, what are they called containers in, in yes. EVE? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. yeah. So you are able to sort into containers um, for, you know, visually grouping things. Um, but you are able to see the entire thing at once. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think I agree with uh, some of the guys here that we should not go for such an elaborate, um, um, very high-tech system if you're playing an, a medieval game because it, it would break down part of the feel to it, I think. So uh, maybe we could uh, could opt to go a bit more for like uh, the, the World of Warcraft approach where you have like several pouches yeah. uh, for several items and those pouches on themselves could be unlimited in the amount of uh, unique items that you can store, and again, base them on a on a weight level, or uh, weight restriction, and then you can have say a total of uh, of six slots. I'm just calling out a number here, and in those six slots, you can fit six different types of pouches that would allow you to simply categorize your items, still all bound by the restrictions of the weight that you're able to carry maximum. Mm -hmm. But it it also looks nicer, and it makes more sense that a person who's walking in a forest trying to kill bears and stuff has pouches on his belt or whatever in which he carries leaves and herbs and I don't know whatever rocks, diamonds, gold, mm -hmm. for that matter, yeah. and keys. But in in the case if you are using some pouches, for example, for harvesting ore or resources, ground materials like iron. It makes no sense with the weight limitation because then you need to expect that you also need to have a weight limit on the resource, for example. That's the point. I mean, you cannot carry around, for example, let's say 1,000 units of or One unit is almost nearby one kilogram. It makes no sense. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. True. Yeah. Well, in, in EVE, they, didn't, they don't really have weight. They have volume because they're in space and so everything yeah. floats. But... Um, in Ultima Online, how that was handled was you would purchase a pack mule, and yep. um, and that pack mule would, um, uh, for lack of better terms, uh, would would follow you like a pet. And uh, now, if you didn't feed it, it would get upset and it would start going looking for food, <laughs> 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 and then you'd have to chase down your you know your pack animal, and somebody else you know might feed it and tame it. If it's really hungry and and then walk off with all of your stuff, <laughs> but, um, yeah, but that would be a great idea, I think. I like, I like that. that yeah. mm -hmm. you know, well, so, obviously, that you have some move, that's good. Yeah, so so you know, if you're going to carry a lot of stuff, then you know, then maybe it's it's a matter of that you have to have assistance in whatever method. I'm not sure what the method should be, but, uh, you know, I liked the pack animals, and some people were really good at controlling them and would have six or seven of them, but that could get very unwieldy, and if one ran off, you'd have to leave the rest of the pack to try and go get them. Well, so That's up to you. I mean, uh, the higher the sticks, the higher the risks, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I mean, and if they were but, attacked, uh, sometimes they would just start running the direction that they were pointed. <laughs> But uh, but I like the idea actually that if you if it's down to getting um, um, ore and and wood material or stones together, I mean yeah, you're in a fantasy game. Obviously, we can always carry more in a game than we can get, carry in real life, for example. But up to a certain like I don't know new reality, let's call it that. And yep. um, I mean obviously, I think we've come to the conclusion that this game is not going to be about grinding a million creatures and then leveling up. So therefore, you will not have a tremendous amount of junk that you have to carry around. So the focus would much more be about going out and looking for stuff because you want to build it, or you want to build a house or whatever. So yep. why not also then change that whole game mechanics part into focusing it much more on not so much how much the person could carry in those kind of things, uh, like how much ore and how much wood you can carry, but uh, base it on the mules, uh, allow people to actually buy and research, I don't know, a blueprint so that they can create a carriage that can be toned by a mule so that you can load that up with logs and bricks at the mm -hmm. same time. Mm -hmm. Something the like that. 
the blueprint concept's already been implemented in the the game. We saw yeah. an example of that, so it would not be hard to expand that to things Creating like which, yeah. 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 Now this also makes the assumption that you don't get magic items like bag of bags of holding or extra dimensional spaces, because already implicit in the game, uh, from what the developer has stated publicly, is that there will be a gate system. Yeah. Uh, between areas that you can travel through, and you know, if the the magic already exists to do that, then eventually it will become possible for players to create something similar. Theoretically, I mean, mm -hmm. hopefully, mm -hmm. you know, you you become the high a magician of such high level that you can actually like create a gate wherever you are. At All which right. point, you know, you're, like you're you just tossing stuff through the gate as you find it and going back through later and collecting, you know, organizing it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, or, or maybe uh, like what you're saying is that um, I've, I've been seeing the other uh, roundtable versions um, to catch up a bit quickly. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think there it was discussed like you find an ore vein somewhere or you're digging oh, yeah, a hole yeah, yeah. somewhere in a rock and you end up in a, in a mine which is now yours and you decide to build a little house in front of it with a little wall and so that it's safe to do that and then you have to take your ore out and you could for example have a portal in the corner of your house that leads straight back to some sort of city hall portal room where you end up and then you only have to drag it back to whatever it is. I mean the shop yeah. you have there so you can sell your stuff or mm -hmm. drag it to your to your land where you want to build your house. Yeah. I wouldn't really like the portal system. I would prefer sure. just NPCs carrying it around like your helpers, My not slaves. I, what I'm just saying, though, is this is a possibility in the far future. I mean, hmm. this isn't something I'm anticipating them implementing as a possibility up front, but I'm just throwing that out there as an example of possible outcomes of this because you can pretty much assume that whatever made the gates is a level of magic that will not be available to the players for a long time. Right. But as you play longer and longer and longer, eventually you're going to have people that hit the top end of what's magically available. And they're going to start experimenting, or at least hopefully. You'll and reward be able it to, yeah, in the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I can totally see that, that in the future that there will be mages or whoever that may be able to make portals. And, um, and, and you know, you may be forced to work together, so a guy who's a miner is not a major or main, not a major, minor major, <laughs> is not a mage. And, um, and, or maybe they could be in that combination. And, yeah. uh, but they may have to work together to transport all of the stuff or whatever. So, yeah. Yeah. That's going it, back to like have a, to be my, some, or the portals could be temporal. Very expensive to do. What I was going to say is uh, back in the uh, EverQuest days, you had uh, the druids and the mages that were able to port people around. And uh, this is back before they added for the, the POK books in the game. But in the game, the, there was a bartering system amongst players for, I will trade you or donate you this many platinum pieces for you to teleport me to such and such place because only two set character classes were able to teleport people around. Yeah. So it actually makes, it's a self-building economy when we do it that way. Something yeah. similar is already happening in World of Warcraft as well, isn't it? Yeah, people hate yeah. mages because they charge. Yeah, right. They, they they charge you to create a portal to a certain area, and then you just walk through, and bang, there you are. But the the uh, how to word this? Uh, the urgency of teleportation in World of Warcraft is is nowhere near as exciting as what original EverQuest was, because yeah. It, it took hours to travel from one place to the next. And World of Warcraft, you can just jump on, you know, your uh, your uh, flight paths, and you can still get to somewhere quicker. No I would time for that. <sighs> they would rather spend half an hour in the local chat <laughs> trying to get something, and then they would complain about the price. Then that's on them. But on the other hand, how bad is it if you have to travel uh, in real time, like half an hour to get from A to B? Because if, if you're an E, for example, to just take out Eve as an example again, and you're at one side of the universe and you want to take a freighter to, I don't know, 40 jumps away, it will take you about an hour and a half to two hours to get there. Yeah. 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 But more. Travel, travel in Eve is different from uh, travel in, let's say, 
War Z, or yeah. excuse me, yeah. Infestation, because in Eve, there's always something beautiful in the background to look at. There's always something exciting going on at the gates. Uh, there's always in, a ganker there. For yeah, you. there's That's always true. a ganker there waiting for you. But in like Infestation, oh my God, traveling in Infestation is the boringest thing on the yeah. planet. It is yeah, very so boring, boring, but it's filled with huge amounts of risk too. And Eve, yeah. you, you can actually move around without risk um, if you're if you're willing to take a longer route. Yeah. Uh, most of the time, not all. Couldn't, you, couldn't you implement something similar in, into this game? Like, I mean, um, um, obviously for PvP ver um, um, uh, purposes, you could actually exclude most of the portaling. Uh, system so that people are forced to actually travel around by either foot or mule or carriage or whatever means of transportation you have so that in within certain zones PvPers would actually have a chance to chase them, follow them, group them together and try and get you all your resources. Yeah. yeah. And uh, you could team up so that you uh, you were escorted by a large group of I don't know, military people like mercenaries who could, I don't know, uh, guarantee you a safe passage or for as far as possible. And that adds another factor to the game of gameplay for both PvE and PvP. Mm -hmm. I well, personally, I personally think that there has to be a balance, though, because the the whole yeah. deal is here is how much does your inventory weigh? How do you transport it, and everything? And you know, um, maybe there maybe there does need to be ways to transport things that that are much more secure. But at the same time, the cost of them, whether it's time, resources, money, whatever, are much higher for the safety. Yeah. Um, and, and the people who are willing to take more risk, uh, it costs them a lot less. Well, I could I could see where, uh, for example, a starter would go around with a donkey with a simple open chariot behind it, carrying around some boulders and some some logs. And then when you've played for about a year, for example, uh, you're uh, driving a six-horse driven, super reinforced uh, carriage that can travel <laughs> at super high speeds, where it's pretty hard to get them. And even if you do, you need some special skills to open that thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that gives you a relative safety once you've well progressed in the game. Well, mm -hmm. you can also get safety in the game because the game already offers uh, personal homes, and I would say that mm -hmm. uh, depending on what kind of chest system that you have, let's say that you have to buy your furniture in the game and you buy you know, your stash boxes for inside your home, those boxes should be uh, already secure that no one can get into them, but anything yeah. outside of there can actually be robbed from you. Mm -hmm. So what they should do is say that you... You look at the importance of what items you want to have locked up in a place where they're not going to get touched versus the items you carry that you can lose at any minute. Yeah. Let's, um, you know, I'm finding this be very fascinating talking about how to transport stuff. Um, but the topic today really is the inventory system. And uh, so, well, that's okay. Yep. You know, um, you know, it, this is probably something we're going to be talking about transportation at another time, I am sure. And um, so, let's get back into the inventory. <clears throat> it is um, inventory is we got we got to figure out now how it is that we're going to handle the inventory because there's other things based in the game that are dependent on that. And so, uh, I, I think that, um, you know, chat room and you guys here uh, in Google Hangout, is, is there pretty much a consensus that it shouldn't be highly detailed and, like it is in EVE and, you know, be lists or whatever? I think it should be very, very basic and tons of item organization. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because... Um uh, I don't. Uh, however, the skill system ends up working out will make a a a difference in you know what you know about items because since this is not a uh, this is not a level based game where you know I turn seventy level I can suddenly use this item and I suddenly know how everything works with it. It mm -hmm. may be where you have to have a certain level of skill to even understand what an object is, you know? Um, I uh, So the inventory, I think we should just keep as a, a very simplistic system 
as far as carrying stuff and maybe mm-hmm. like uh, like a character sheet inventory system for like what you're wearing. Yeah. Oh yeah. I, yeah. I'm I'm in favor of those because it also fits the the style of the game since we're in medieval yeah. times. Yes. Yeah, I agree. One of the one of the so it is simpler in medieval times. I mean, of course, there's not all the technology. There's not um, there's not a lot of writing. There's not a lot of uh, of, of other things. The um, the uh, system that was used in Ultima Online was um, I really liked it because you could just dump everything into a bag and, and you know uh, um, so uh, is it Oaf? How, how do you pronounce your name? O O F. Yeah, Oaf. Correct. Oaf. Yeah. Okay. So the um, you had mentioned about you know going out and killing things, gathering resources, and everything, and I was just envisioning having you know a, a main backpack or whatnot and going out and killing a bear and skinning it and then throwing that bear hide into my backpack and it covers mm. everything <laughs> so you can't see anything <laughs> else because it's you know it's like a big blanket on there and mm. um, and whether or not that would be fun or whether or not that would you know be a problem um, I- I think it would be fun for the first three times after that is going to be a huge pain in the ass. Well, you know, so to in, be honest. <laughs> in, in UO what we did is we would just dump everything into our backpack and then the big things like that we had little sub bags. And so you might put that into a sub bag and then so that would be the sub bag for all the, the big crap or whatever. And um, mm. uh, so you were able to organize things but the, the best thing about it was that you could get way more finely tuned on on the inventory of your stuff than you ever could with a grid system. With a grid system, you know, everything you dump them in, they just go into the next available slot or whatnot, and um, and then you, you, maybe you have to scroll down to see it. Yeah. Um, in a in a in a system that's more of a free for all, you might carry three or four bags inside your main backpack, and then. You know, you might put all of your reagents in one. You might put all of your uh, money in another, uh, and your, uh, um, you know, a spare sword and some other supplies in another one. But then, in your main backpack, you might have, you know, health potions or whatnot, stuff that you need to get to really quickly. Um, <laughs> you kidding? I'm going to have a belt belt for that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Marcus. Yes. Why? Why not have two types of, of bags? Like one big backpack. And mm-hmm. one small pouch where you can keep like small potions, scrolls, regions for magic that you mm-hmm. can access during in combat. Well, mm-hmm. That's like the Diablo effect with you know, your potions and stuff, and your scrolls are on your belt. Yeah. Right. Right. So you're talking are like, like uh, shortcuts. Yeah. Yeah. Is that what you're referring to? Is like shortcuts? Something or? like shortcuts. Yeah. yeah. It, Either be a... limited by item number that you can only have five, let's say, mm-hmm. random mm-hmm. number, or a white system. Well, Make even back in real medieval belt. days, they actually really did carry their potions and stuff back on their belt because it's basically like a holster for a gun. It's for them to quickly get to it. Yeah. Hmm. So that's the idea behind it. You can hmm. visualize that as well in the game quite nicely if, if that is part of the possibility. It would also make some sense. You're using yeah. bows and arrow and then you just grab a potion from your belt. Yeah, it adds another bit of realism to the game, uh, which uh, I don't mind as long as it's not like over exaggerated. But uh, it's nice to see some things come together and like, oh yeah, that makes sense. That's actually fun. I mean, it's the same like if if you go into a game where the graphics are really like mind blowing, it it adds something because every time like we're in Eve, you're traveling forty jumps as we just discussed, and then in the background there's this mind blowing, I don't know, galaxy that just blows you away and distracts you from the fact that you're doing something extremely boring. <laughs> yeah, the understatement there in a freighter. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, I mean, yeah, I, I could see where, where these these things in, hanging on the belt would um, certainly contribute to the idea that uh, um, it looks nice, it makes sense, it's, it's organized, and it also automatically uh, implements a limitation of how much stuff you can carry, and not only in how many types, but also in how many units. And whether that be uh, limited by a number or by weight or both, and you can have a separation with, between that. I mean, that's just something else we could do. But I like the idea of having separate pouches or pouches on belts and, and stuff. 
and um, yeah, maybe what what Marcus said in the beginning is just one giant mess. I mean, you're just starting, so you have to get used to not only the game, but even in the game as a character, you have to get used to all your mess and you have to organize it. And as you work through the game and work up your skills, uh, and and get blueprints for it, you can design another belt or a backpack with four compartments that makes mm -hmm. it easier. Mm -hmm. That's actually that that is, sounds like a really good idea. Uh, that you know everything's just a mess right at the beginning, but that yep. Um, yep. that tailors who make the bags or whatever, leather workers, whoever, they um, you know in the higher skills they start to able to make features in the bags that make things more convenient for us. That I would enjoy. <laughs> you can also add some additional slots like hidden pockets in your gloves or additional pockets on your shirt. Hmm. Mm -hmm. hmm. Yeah, that something like that would make sense where your inventory slots are based on uh, what you have available on each item. Mm -hmm. For instance, if you have a backpack with exterior pockets, It'll have more slots, but it'll have each of those slots will have a limit on what it can carry. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. If you got slots on a belt, you might be able to hold a small vial or something very light. You got a quiver for arrows. There's a limited number of arrows you can hold in there. Mm -hmm. You know. And I'm, I'm not laughing at you. I just had an inside joke. Please continue. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, let me guess. You play D and D. <laughs> no, no, no. I was imagining walking around with a giant hat. And uh, uh, I want to trade something with a guy that I meet on the road, and he says, "Hey, you happen to have any boulders?" And I just take off my hat and say, "Yeah, I got about 50 here. How many? How many do you need?" <laughs> <laughs> but something like that, no matter how absurd, you know, because this suddenly means that magic is important, especially yep. dimensional mm. magic. Mm. So if you got an item like a backpack that's not necessarily a dimensional portal, but like a, a a backpack of holding, you know? Mm -hmm. You can put a lot more stuff in there and have it so that the organizational level or the amount of weight you carry is dra dramatically different. So yep. you're 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 integrating the magic system in with the the inventory system. This now, is starting to sound like the the link bag theory. Yeah, Link's well, bag it can carry, you know, massive size items in this little bitty pouch. But Something like this, yet again, would be a high-level thing and make it something very rare with the in, in the game environment. So if you, for instance, find the knowledge to to build something like this, you come up with the blueprint and, you know, materials and all that like you would anything else, and then you have yet another item to sell, you know. But I'm just saying make it... My, my general idea is make it so the mechanic includes stuff like this up front so that uh, whatever system they decide on simple or complex or whatever, um, make it so that it makes sense in the game world. Because mm -hmm. the actual format is not as important as it making sense. Yeah. Like well, we do, we do have to have immersion. We can't have, yeah. we can't, you know, be in a medieval fantasy world and, and all of a sudden come across a television. <laughs> yeah, you know, no. um, it, it breaks it breaks the reality of it, even though it's not real in the first place. But yeah. you know, um, <clears throat> that huh. that would just be disturbing. Maybe um, I mean you can have some some practical jokes like what I just said an, an armored carriage uh, driven by six reinforced horses because they're wearing armor. But I mean that's somehow understandable with a bit of fun in it. So uh, I do like the ideas that I'm hearing here. Uh, uh, you know, you've got your normal bags that are a mess. You've got higher level tailors or whatever that are able to put in some features, whatever those may be, as uh, to give you slots or whatnot. Uh, maybe some extra pockets on the bags, pockets on, uh, on your attire. Uh, yeah. and, um, and you know, so people who are wearing cloth or whatnot would be able to have some pockets. People who are in armor or whatnot probably wouldn't. <laughs> or if they had clothes on underneath that had pockets and they put their armor on, they may not be able to get to the stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Which would now be kind of funny. Much gimping plate wearers. What's that? Now you're pretty much screwing with the plate users. Well, you know, there's something that you give up for that extra protection at the same time. Yeah. yeah, and then what he, 
what he's saying makes sense because if you go back into medieval times, the people that actually wore heavy armor, they had people they owned, you know, their slaves that carried all their crap for them because they couldn't carry it wearing the plate armor. Yep. So yeah, the people in real times really could not carry everything like you should be able to. Plus, if you're wearing plate armor, you wouldn't be worried about the clothes underneath your plate armor would not have pockets anyways. They'd have padding. <laughs> Yeah, they yeah. didn't wear conventional clothing under their plate armor. They, that's what yeah. they wore was padding. Oh, really? The same they stuff that they put under their, uh, their, uh, yeah, on so, their horses. So um, they wore padding. Was that to keep from chafing on the metal chafing against their skin or something? Um, part of that, and to absorb blows. I mean, I'm not an SCA member, really. I'm not. I promise. <laughs> I, I don't know anything about wearing armor for real life. But, uh, no, usually there was a gambeson underneath, and it had some sort of uh, cloth padding to it, either, like, uh, cotton stuffing or whatever. Uh, I mean, there, there was a lot of ways to do it. But uh, most of the time, if you were wearing something like heavy plate, you had people helping you, no matter yeah. what. Yeah, definitely. And, they did. Yeah. Imagine now, riding a horse with a frying pan under your ass. I mean, it's not very convenient. <laughs> Well, then that hunter. being said, people that's wearing plate armor should be limited to how they can travel, for one. But just travel slower, for sure. Oh, yeah, and no swimming. <laughs> but, <laughs> of course, then again, it also <laughs> does, yeah, yeah, no swimming. Um, it also depends on uh, what type of plate, what type of materials the plate's made from, whether or not there's any magical bonuses to it. I mean... So we, we that, can make a list. Yeah. What you're trying to say, Overlord, if, if I'm not <coughs> getting you wrong, is that when you're wearing, for example, heavy armor like plate, um, should that limit your uh, your inventory size, for example, like how much you can carry? Well, I definitely. Think so. um, I, I don't think it should limit it, but any limitation, like for instance, you can still wear a belt with quick release, you know, pouches on yes. top of it, on top of the armor. Yeah. However, you're not going to get access to like you know pockets in your pants and right. stuff like that. As yeah. long as the the what's being done makes sense more well, than so anything but, else. But that means that um, uh, in the character sheet where you can actually fit your character, say like with an undergarment and with a protection layer on top, yeah. let's call it armor, that that will be two separate layers, as we've seen in in some other games. Uh, let me see. I, I think it was uh, was it. Uh, the pre uh, previous versions of um, come on Skyrim, uh, Elder Scrolls, but even before that, I think there also you have undergarment and then you have an armor on top. And based on what you were wearing in one or the other, you could not wear certain combinations. And I think yeah. that's in place here yeah. as well. Then it was like that. Um, I think it was Morrowind. Morrowind, yeah, that's the one. Thanks. Well, yeah. people are starting to talk about. Uh, how uh, it's unfair for the people that's wearing plate to be limited on how much they carry. But if you look at it in a class-to-class -class basis, uh, mages and stuff like that shouldn't be allowed to carry stuff either because of physical strength. So that leaves like people like rogues and assassins and stuff that will actually be the loot carriers of all parties because they're the ones that, you know, going around thieving things. So they should be the ones carrying everything. Yeah, but I, I think wow. um, what was discussed already, and correct me if I'm wrong here, that uh, you're not choosing whether you're going to be a mage or a rogue. You can be everything you want. You start a, as as one character, and there you build up as much as you want. So you can be a mage and a rogue and, I don't know, whatever. Yeah, it's all skill-based. Yeah. yeah, all skill-based. Yeah. Like but, but, like but you won't be good at, all, at any of them, or you'll only be good at, at them if you're trying to do all of them at the same time, because... You know, the, the thought being that that as you work hard on, you know, being a better mage, something else atrophies. Okay, yeah. Yeah, that's like the, I can't remember what game it was I played back, I think it was Super Nintendo. They The skill system looked like a big rubber band on a ball, and more you stretched it one way, more it pulled away from another side. Yeah. But what I can see happening, for example, if you at some point travel around as a mage because you've trained up for it and you can, then you have to change to a certain set of clothes and armor and, and that limits you in a certain way of how much you can carry. It doesn't change your character and your person itself per se, it just 
I mean, what whatever role it is that you're currently choosing to do limits you in a certain way. But you also manage to skill up the uh, fact that you can manage to have a mule with you, which happened to have uh, a backpack on its back in which you are storing your plate armor so you want to be a rogue. And halfway through there, you can do your Superman thing in a phone boot, except there's not a phone <laughs> boot, but you can swap over from character A to B that allows you to travel faster and carry more stuff. But, of course, that would not allow you to do the magical stuff. You could switch, it will just take you some time, but the possibilities would be there because you've trained up for both and you can carry around all your shit so you actually can do uh, um, like a makeover of yourself temporarily. So the rubber band is only stretched by your armor <laughs> and not your... Uh, no, it's real. And not your uh, character. That's plate what we users. are doing currently with plate users. No swim. <laughs> no swim. <laughs> <laughs> It's saying you better be able to hold your breath to get across the creek. Yep. <laughs> I also made you this one. <laughs> it's a kitty. Yes. Um, you it can't like have an internet show without a cat. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. Well, I think that um, that okay. Let's uh, let's let's. Uh, Take this into uh, a little more of a direction here of managing inventory, and um, can we think of anything that, what are helpful things in managing inventory? If you start with just a bag and you throw everything in, what's the next logical step in helping you to organize this? Not have pallets like World of Warcraft did, that was horrible. Pallets. It's gotta be like a list. The way, or a grid, don't have the grid, have a list mm -hmm. of the stuff that you have, because inventory management is so hard that way. Mm -hmm. Well, are we talking strictly on character, or are we talking overall world where you have all sorts of stuff? Well, okay, so that's a debate right there, but should you be able to pull up a list of what you have in the bank when you're not at the bank? No. 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 So, so, so there is no world overall inventory. Wait a sec. No, no, no. Let's let's look at this a little bit different. Okay. Okay. You can uh, not physically be at the bank and have a list of what you have in the bank if you have a book with that list in it. Mm, that's an interesting mm. idea. That, so yeah. you're getting a receipt from the, the banker and it has a list but if you add it and don't get that book updated those items won't show in the book. So you can't you edit can... your bank but you can see what's in it. So, yeah, so you, you can consult it, inventory you can't management. Manage it. Yeah, well a a, for, uh, uh, a medieval form of inventory management all you're mm -hmm. doing, all it is is an accounting of the stuff and where you keep it. Now whether or not it's up to date is a whole different issue, yeah. Because mm -hmm. that can be a an, a game mechanic where you're saying, okay, I have all sorts of stuff. I'm wealthy. I went adventuring. I've got all these skills. I've kicked a butt and taken names. And now I got stuff in this bank vault. I've got stuff in my house. I've got stuff on my person. The stuff on your person, well, you can check that any time. Mm -hmm. The stuff in your house, well. If you've inventoried it and put it in the book, and you can make that some sort of game mechanic where you can auto-update that while you're in the presence of the items, mm -hmm. or have the NPC at the bank auto-update it, you know, you can set it up so that wherever you visited last, you know, whenever you yeah. visited last, if you auto-updated it, it means you took some time to write down, oh, I have this, this, and this now. It's in my my book. That is how you you look at your inventory and see what you have. You, you know what? Yeah. What you're saying is a great idea, but I think we should take it one step further. And instead of the book auto-updating, I think you should, you yourself should have to manage that book. So you get a book in the game that you can type out and write out anything you want into it, and you keep track of where your stuff mm. is. <laughs> well, yes That would be no. super obnoxious. Yeah, I don't... I Actually, I like that idea. I like being able to write notes and remember things and everything. And, and I like the idea of it being in a book. Um, as, I was, as I was listening to Evil talk about this, I was thinking to myself, 
well, you know, this could be an inventory book and there could be some different levels of this, you know, that can like, you know, hold so many, you know, it has so many pages or whatever, you know, yeah. and, and can have so many items and that, that it might be something that if you learn the skill of reading and writing <laughs> or whatever, mm -hmm. um, that it, um, that it, <clears throat> it would, uh, you know, auto update, like every time you go to the bank, you know, your bank pages would just auto update to whatever's in there and every time you're at house a you might name the house or whatnot it would you would update the inventory there uh but then also i was thinking a little bit beyond that of uh that there should still be risk to everything and so if you get killed um and then somebody might be able to grab that book if they killed you yes and then they would know where all your shit is yeah <laughs> Um, that would be awesome. Uh, um, not maybe they wouldn't be able to break into your house or get into your bank box, but um, you know, oh, maybe that would be like treasure hunting. That if you had some personal lockers out in different places, that if you if you got ganked, that they might be able to go out and have at least uh, it would be almost like treasure hunting to or like give the coordinates or something like that, and then they'd have some sort of chance at breaking into it. Well, not only that, but if, if they know what you possess and you, they know, for example, by the book where you live, the only thing they have to do is uh, follow you and wait until you come out of the house with a lot of junk. <laughs> and then, and then, and then walk in, open a portal, and invite all their friends. Here, yeah, come grab exactly. free stuff. And, and like, this sounds uh, familiar. <laughs> it's <laughs> happened. It's happened to me. <laughs> but either way, that way, you know, if a player wants to spend the... What is that background noise? Okay. It's one way. Um, either way, the point is you have a uh, way to... Um, I hear that, too. I, I hear that. Where is that coming from? I don't know. It was... Oof. Uh -oh. So, continue on. He can unmute himself when he's ready to talk again. Okay. Uh, I'm still... Oh, I got to mute it, too, don't I? Oh, um, yeah. Sorry. Well... Oh. Okay. okay. I need, no, I still got it. I oh, still well, then I was one. wrong. Okay, well, let's continue. Either way. I continue on. Either way, um, oh, there it goes. It just disappeared. Um, the, um, but either way, you know, the book can be a, a method for keeping track of stuff. Maybe instead of writing it down, maybe drag and drop entries mm, into mm -hmm. the book. So you have the item in front of you. And you can just drag it and drop it into the book, and instead of you know moving the item, it just writes down the item and where it's at automatically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, also, make it an option to change the language you're writing in. Yep. So that oh. if you Have know it encoded. if you know a language that isn't common, it would just look like gibberish to somebody who doesn't know the language. Or you know, that could add even more stuff to it that where they have to decipher it. It also adds a level of complexity because uh, all of a sudden the book becomes important because you don't know what's in it. It could be magic spells. It could be an account book. It could be um, you know poetry about what you do with toilet paper or something. <laughs> you don't know. <laughs> but the point is you have a book that can be taken. Now... Here's the thing. If you get ganked and die and you lose the book, you have to go out and buy a new book and go through this process again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, so you, so you the, would protect the book because it's valuable, not because yes. it, it cost you very much maybe, but because it's of the information. It's a pain being asked to update, yes. Mm -hmm, information, because mm -hmm. uh, if this is a skill-based game, then information is power. So, so you might travel mm -hmm. to the bank on purpose with the book just to update Whereas if you're going out uh, adventuring, you, uh, might leave you would not take home. the book with you. Yes. Okay. Yeah, and even if you didn't do that, I mean, it would still be the same as in other, many other games because um, uh, there you don't, for example, have the opportunity to check what is in your storage house uh, when you're out killing animals or mobs. Yeah. So it will be like a luxury luxury option you can add, which of course makes a nice prey for somebody else, but uh, you can survive without it. Mm -hmm. 
So yeah, yeah I, I keep I, hearing that noise. I know, and you like muted everybody. Yeah, I did. Yeah, um, I see a lot of noise coming from Stephen. I got him muted, but uh, it went away. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. So hard to say. Uh, this anyway. is, this is lovely technology. <laughs> see what happens when you upgrade, Marcus. I know. Well, it's not me. Oh. <laughs> well, I, I don't have I mean, an alarm clock. You're pretty oh, much the only one you haven't muted yet, haven't you? No. Here, let me mute <laughs> myself. <laughs> um, anyway. So, anyway, yeah. okay, I like this. I like this idea. It's a thought beyond just inventory. It's inventory management. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I really like the idea of books. And I think that it, it, you know, I'm assuming that it wouldn't be too hard to program in, uh, especially... You know, and it could be different levels of books. You know, one is you have to write everything. A level two book is one where you could drag a bag on top of the book or something like that, and then it would it would write out everything that's in the bag or something like that. And then a third level, which might auto update. Um, and uh, you, you can know. have like a house Carl that can do it for you if you own a house. Yeah. If, you, if you're le high level enough, if you're if you're skilled enough, then you can um, get yourself uh, a house carl that you pay a certain fee per month. They can do certain chores for you as well when you're a not house there. House carl is that like a butler or a slave or something? Yeah, more like a butler. A guy that takes care of small things while you're mm -hmm. not there, or even when you're there, uh, like filling out your book for you. This goes back to hiring NPCs. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, but it is related, of course, to what yeah. your inventory is. But yeah, we're we're wandering off a bit, so. Yeah. Well, yeah. we had That's discussed. Not. We had a big discussion about NPCs last time. So I'm just saying that I'm putting it into context to where what you're saying we've already talked about, but we can. It can be implemented the same way. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So. I have a bit like a small idea about the language system. Like you know a language in real life, and you might be using that one in the game to update. What if you can learn different languages, like magical languages? Within the game, well, like runic, or something, or runic, elvish, elf, pig Latin, Nordic, yeah, <laughs> pig Latin. And um, uh, here's an idea that I I thought of. Actually, I've been thinking about the whole skill system all week, and I sent you a message on Facebook, Marky, that has a, a proposed idea. But he's proposing uh, to you. <laughs> don't tell Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, but. Uh, <laughs> If uh, you can tie in the language system to uh, the skills that you have and the in-game voice channels, take and make it so that if you speak in a language, if you choose to speak in a language that nobody else understands, they don't have the skill for it, it your voice translates into gibberish that they don't understand. Mm. That's I got of, this idea. That, that I actually, got, they have that in UO. They I did not that know that. Too. Yeah, they I had, did not they, know that. They had uh, speaking games. to the dead, um, huh. and so if you could, uh, it was spirit speak, is what it was called. And so if uh, if you had a high enough skill in spirit speak, you could start speaking to ghosts, uh, and ghosts were players who had been killed that were on their way back to a shrine or whatnot to get resurrected. Hmm. And um, they'd be like, "Oh, go get my loot," <laughs> you know. <laughs> Help me out, or or can you res me, please? Uh, I'll and, let you read my book. <laughs> yeah, and when they were when if you didn't have the skills, they just uh, it appeared above their head, going, Ooh, you know, just a whole bunch of O's and everything. And uh, so um, there definitely could be some things implemented like this of of languages and communication. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, maybe that's something I'm going to write down as another as another line item, um, which would be uh, communication. And yeah. so I think that that's um, I think that there's a lot of room for that, um, and a lot of intrigue and a lot of sub games. Meaning, you know, like you find this book, you don't know what language it's in, you get it translated, and then you see that it's got coordinates to a stash. Yeah. Um, and you have to do it within so much amount of time because that stash has, you know, maybe got moved or something like that. And, and um, so. Or maybe the translator told somebody else about the stash that they translated. <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah. 
but the the idea is since this is all skill based and what I'm talking about is like while you're actually speaking on the voice channel if you speak if you select a language that you're speaking in does not uh, does not project your voice directly to the other players it translates it into gibberish mm -hmm. and just you just get a, a your voice goes all gibberishy mm -hmm. while you're talking or it just sounds so faint they, it's where you, or, you know you hear the words but you can't quite distinguish what it is yeah but mm -hmm. the the idea is that if for instance I'm speaking in in dwarvish and nobody else in the party has dwarvish and I'm sitting here going and then we're gonna go take out the bad guy You're and all they hear is all they hear is like ich bin ein Scheißkopf. Bad and guy. They don't. They don't understand. <laughs> they don't understand what you're saying. You know. I did. I, I did. <laughs> I know you guys did, but uh, you but know. I didn't. So point made, huh? Yeah. It uh, works. Let's implement it. That, Actually, that, that would also that, there will be would, some of that anyway. Yeah, too. but that, that would gives, also that, gives that would also incentive. add the opening to other factions, and you'd have ethnic groups. Yep. That would give the that would give a, an in for them to put in these other ethnic groups, and you can also translate to that to the ancient languages. For instance, you spend a whole bunch of time learning these ancient languages, so you can translate scrolls, and then you're like, um, you know, well, how do I pronounce this stuff? And you have to translate mm -hmm. it. And if nobody else speaks the language, it's just gibberish to them, you know. Yeah. It would mm -hmm. also add a huge layer to role players. Yes. Oh my god. Oh my god, we don't want to support any role players in this game. Gulch are in. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think that would be awesome. Um, well, and... shouldn't I mean, the more you hear someone talk in some kind of gibberish language, the better you should get at it? Well, okay, no. so here's, sure. how, here's one, of the, one of the theories behind how the skills work, is that... If you are in proximity to someone else practicing a skill, you start to learn some of that by default. And uh, so, you know, if um, if someone is right in front of you, you know, lumberjacking or whatnot, and you have no lumberjacking skill, but you're sitting there talking to them, you may go up a, 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 your first point in lumberjacking skill just while you're talking to them because you have observed, uh, you know, you have observed what they're doing. Um, they, they did that in UO, and, and um, it would only go up to a certain level. It would go up to like maybe 20 out of 100 points. Um, and, uh, but then you had the problem of, you know, somebody who was like a seven-time GM. You know, you had like 700 skill points, and you'd get 100 in each. You were a grandmaster in that particular skill. And then they wouldn't want to be near anybody because if somebody lit a campfire next to them, they might, they might go lose that last point of skill, you know, from one of their things, and it would you know be applied to campfire and so they would lock their skills in place at a certain point um, that uh, you know to not allow it to atrophy so yeah. well I'm not I'm not fond of the idea of a skill atrophying um, I think once you acquire knowledge it should be kept now one possibility could be that uh, age and infirmity or damage to your stats may take away some knowledge or skills mm, like a blow to the but head. I, 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 the idea that you have a limited capacity especially in a world where there's magic mm -hmm. you know is, is something that, that I'm not saying it's necessarily you know I'm not saying that it's something that should be completely discarded as an idea but it doesn't make sense to me if I'm that I don't know, I'm thinking that if you practice something for so long, let's say, you know, being a lumberjack, and you stop doing it for a while, you should start to lose some points of skills to it just because you're getting rusty at doing it. Well, there is the there's the thought of uh, one thing I was thinking of is like an athlete, um, and an athlete if they you know quit you know quit training for a year, they don't just immediately end up right at the same spot that they were. Um, yeah. They've got some work to do again. I'm not necessarily sure that that I want to have to go out and practice a skill all the time just to keep it up, though, at the same time. Um, that might become quite annoying. 
I think that it should only apply to things like trade skills, uh, things that like your magic skills and you know your the skills that make you you. Not so much, but uh, let's say uh, you know doing herbs, that stuff like that. You should have to keep up on. Hmm. I was See, thinking the things in real life, things like when you learn a second language, it doesn't atrophy for you too much, does it? I mean, if you if you grew up with it and you 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 really you know, knew, knew it well. I mean, it might atrophy a little bit, but um, it doesn't... Well, it's like riding a bicycle. If I haven't ridden a bicycle yeah. in a couple of years, can I remember a couple of years later how to ride a bicycle? Yeah, yeah. but the yeah. same as with languages, well, that, you'll remember. I mean, you, you could learn a language and speak it fluently and not use it for five years, and then you think, like, oh, my God, I've lost it all. You meet a native person from that language, and you start talking, yeah, and within 10 minutes, you pick it up. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean... I yeah. noticed it but, myself. But other, it but, happens. But other language, other things like sword play or like uh, you know, you know, the, the athletic things to where you have to keep toned or whatnot. I don't know. Well, that's a whole another discussion, I think, for for another show. Um, yeah. How to deal with skills and everything and atrophy and yeah. such. And um, so, and we are um, pretty much out of time today. Aww. So I know, but. We are doing these shows right now, Monday through Thursday, same time, uh, each one of the days. And uh, so um, all of you will have a chance to join us tomorrow. And uh, we will uh, carry on. Tomorrow's subject is going to be crafting. Uh, I think it's going to be bigger than one episode. But uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Should I be think good, I, though. I think, I think we're going we're gonna to end up spending several episodes on it. We just probably won't do them all in a row. So, oh, am I still here? Yes, I'm still here. I hadn't clicked on the page in long enough that it thought I was gone to sleep. <laughs> so, okay, well, thank you everybody for joining in today. Uh, I think we came up with some really nice stuff, and uh, so now it's up to uh, the NeoJack guys to uh, see what they can implement. And uh, uh, don't forget that you can go to the forums and you can further document your ideas there. Those forums are temporary. I don't think that those are the permanent forums. I think that that'll be moving uh, to another site uh, when uh, the game has a name and uh, is a little bit more uh, in along in development. And uh, but those forums that uh, are in the link below in the description are what we've got right now. And um, so there we have it. I look forward to seeing you all tomorrow. And uh, thank you, everybody. I appreciate you coming. See you. Bye. 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 See ya. Bye. See ya.